General Johanna. Today we want to get into some uh, a topic uh, talking about from the kingdom, I mean from this empire to the kingdom. What we need to do here to get us there. You understand? Uh, we don't, we really don't know anything about justice because in America we never received justice. So we're going to show you that justice is in the Bible. Uh, we gon' we we know for a fact that justice is in the Bible, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna show you the justice that's in the Bible and how we get this justice. Uh, first, let's go to uh, Revelation eighteen and four, and let's see what the Bible says we need to do to receive this justice. Because the Lord is a just God, and He's going to give us everything that deserves to us. And he's going to give our enemies everything that's deserved to them for what they've done to us. Right. All right, let's read that out. 18 and 4. 18 and 4. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Say what? Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, everybody. Come out of her, my people. The Lord is telling blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to separate from this nation of America. Separate from these other nations. Separate from the idolatry, from the from the doctrine, from the pagan worship, from all the things that you've learned here in this slavery. That's what the Lord wants us to do. He's telling us to come out of here, my people. Read. That ye be not partakers of her sins. Don't partake in the sins that you learn here. Don't partake in celebrating birthdays and, and all these holidays and eating the pork crab shrimp and lobster. And being a homosexual, don't partake in it. You understand? That's what has you destroyed as a people, the sin. Our problem as a nation is we have a sin problem. 
We don't have a financial problem. We don't have a wealth or health problem. We have a sin problem because the wages, the payment for your sin is death. That's right. You go in the store and you give the clerk uh, some money for a bottle of water, then they're going to give you a bottle of water. Well, you give the Lord sin and he's going to give you death. So your financial problem, all the problems that you're having is because you are sinning against the most High. That's right. So you got to separate your spirit. You got to separate yourself from this place that we live in there. Keep reading. And that ye receive not of her plague. If you don't want to receive the plagues and the punishments that's coming to America, you need to separate your spirit from America. You need to separate all the things that you've been taught here. Stop doing it. You know what I'm saying? Because this is not your home. This is not your resting place. This ain't the end. You understand? And once we understand that as a people, then we'll be able to move forward and rebuild this kingdom the way it's supposed to be built according to the Bible. Right. You understand? All right, let me get uh, Habakkuk 2 and, 2 and 12. We're going to go into the punish, the things that the other nations have done to us, and we're going to see how it's going to change. See, these other nations have been raping, robbing, killing, stealing, and destroying us for thousands of years. Ain't just all when we get, got here to America. 2 and 12. Come. Read that. The book of Habakkuk. Chapter 2, verse 12. Uh -huh. Woe to him that builded a town with blood. See, the white man has built his cities on blood everywhere. Every land he go into, he conquer it through murder, raping, robbing, and stealing. And it says what? Woe to him that builded a town with blood. Woe meaning destruction. Destruction to you that builded a town with blood. You understand? The Lord is going to Tear you up for what you've done. You think the Lord ain't going to get you back? We walking around here on the Native American bones in Texas. You think there's there's not going to be a day of payment for that? Keep reading. Establish it a city by iniquity. A, establish a city well by what? By iniquity. And America has been established on sin, on lies, on not keeping treaties. You understand? The Native Americans were the most loving, kind people when they, when Columbus came over here. They was giving them all the beads and the parrots and every little resource they had. They didn't have spears. They had straight cane. You know what I'm saying? They didn't know what a sword was. They was grabbing the sword by the sharp end and cut, cutting themselves. And in the same breath, Christopher Columbus said, these will make fine serpents. You understand? It's, it said that the Lord is saying that he is going to destroy these other nations for what they've done to us. So if you don't want to be partakers of the plague, if you don't want to be uh, partakers of the whooping that's coming to them, then you need to separate your spirit from them because the payment for sin is death, and that's what they're going to receive, and you're going to receive it because you joined together with them. You understand? So they got what they're going to get what they going to get for what they've done, you understand? And other, but these false religions don't understand that they try to give a kingdom to everybody. They trying to say that everybody gonna be in the kingdom, but that's not in the Bible. They read stuff like, well, let's say all, yeah, it's talked about all of Israel. right? Because all of Israel wasn't gonna be saved. They say stuff like, well, let's say the world, yeah, it's talking about the world of Israel. Because the scripture always also say, that I I went, I'm paraphrasing, but I went to where the Jews, the world, where the Jews resort. It also said, love not the world, nor the things of the world. So you got to understand that world has more than one meaning. World don't mean the ants and everything in it. That's the earth. But world is an age in a society. So that has a deck. When, when Christopher Columbus saw this land, he said this was the new world. You understand? So you got to understand the definition and you got to understand the context of this Bible. The context of this Bible is for us only. Give me the Apocrypha. Give me um, 2 Ezra 16, 1 through uh, 16, starting in verse 1. You got to understand the Lord ain't with everybody. The Lord don't love everybody. He created, he created everybody, 
but everybody ain't ain't diamond and gold to him. You know what I'm saying? 16 and 1. Read that. In the Apocrypha, the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, verse 1. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair. Bewail your children and be sorry, for your destruction is at hand. You see what it's saying? It said, woe who? Babylon. You understand? That's right now. That's the so-called America. Who else? Asia. Asia. You Chinese people, destruction is coming to you. Who else? Egypt. You Africans, destruction is coming to you. You understand? You're not going to get away with touching the Lord's people. You're not going to get away with touching the Lord's gold and his silver. Who else? Syria. Uh-huh. You, uh, you Arabs, destruction is coming to you. Y'all over there fighting for our land, and y'all going to get into a fight that you ain't going to be able to get yourself out of. Because the Lord going to join the fight. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you ain't, you ain't got to worry about joining the fight. Because the way we join the fight is by tearing down strongholds. Our strongholds is what's, is what's making this place, this hell that we living in, thrive. Our sin is what's making these other nations rich. You know what I'm saying? We're not joining the battle and getting, you know, getting the army together with troops and tanks and all that. That ain't the way we're going to fight this. We're going to fight this by stop smoking weed. Right. We're going to stop. We're going to fight this fight by stop being homosexuals. We're going to fight this fight by stop celebrating these pagan holidays because by us celebrating these pagan holidays, we are refinancing America. We are refinancing Haiti. We are refinancing all of these places that we are. And they hate you and they, they calling you, they calling you and your people sons of bitches. And they saying that your, your home is a shithole. Right. You understand? We got to separate from them. Keep reading. A sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? The Lord is sending a sword upon them. What do you do with a sword? You kill. You don't hug. You don't pass out kisses. You ain't having no party with no sword. You, we not homosexuals. Ain't no sword fight going on. Right. You understand? The sword that the Lord is sending upon them is murder, destruction. He's going to destroy them. You understand? Keep reading. A fire is sent among you. A fire is sent among you, read. And who may quench you? Ain't no fire department going to put out the fire of the Lord. Your, your, your airplanes full of water that you drop ain't going to stop the Lord's fire. Keep reading. Plagues are sent unto you. What's sent? Plagues are sent unto you. These sicknesses, this Ebola and all this stuff that just popping up, that's the Lord doing that. You see the most skinny ass Africans over there? That's the Lord doing that. You see all these other nations eating, eating these, these swine flu ass foods? That's the Lord doing that to them. Read. And what is he that may drive them away? And who gonna stop the Lord? Who gonna drive away the plagues and the punishment that the Lord is sending to you? You not. Your army not. Your little Technology not, the white man and all his wickedness is not going to be able to combat against the Lord and the angels at all. And what you need to understand, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the only way you're going to get out of this empire to build the kingdom is by separating your spirit from this place. That is vital. You, everybody talking about, I'm waiting on the Lord to come. I'm waiting on the Lord. Well, you, the Lord waiting on you to get right. He ain't coming to get a whole bunch of disobedient kids. He coming to get them obedient ones. He looking for the ones that know that that's listening to what he say to do. Not following after the desires of their own heart. You understand? Keep reading. May any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood or may anyone quench the fire in the stubble. Is anybody going to stop a lion while he hungry? La, -a, he coming for you. You understand? That's what they saying. That ain't the same way you ain't gonna be able to stop a hungry lion in the woods, and you out there walking around sightseeing. The same way you ain't gonna be able to stop the Lord. 
The same way you ain't gonna be able to stop no fire while it's burning the wood, the same way you ain't gonna be able to stop the Lord. Keep reading. Or may anyone quench the fire in the stubble. Mm -hmm. When it had begun to burn, mm -hmm. Keep reading. may one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. You ain't catching this arrow. I don't, what's that dude that be catching arrows uh, on TV? Um, no karate dudes that, in the Bruce Lee. All of them. All of them. Yeah, everybody catching. Everybody catching arrows, but you ain't catching the Lord arrow. That's right. The Lord, a strong archer, when he send them angels down, when he send them missiles, when he send them rockets, you ain't stop. Ain't no EMP stopping them. You ain't finna be able to do nothing. The rockets gonna rain glare, and America gonna burst in air. Right. And all these other nations that's them had a hand in touching the Lord's children. And you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna destroy this place totally, and everybody else gonna see it. It's just like it's just like being at school. And the bully get beat up, and everybody see the bully get dropped. Now it's a it's a new it's a new nigga in town. You drop Darnell, you you knock that Darnell, you the new Darnell. Right, well, it's a Debo. it's a new Debo in town that's coming. And you gonna mess around with black Hispanics and Native Americans and get slapped by Debo if you don't get your mind right. His eye ain't crooked, so I... damn right. Straight eye Debo. You understand? Where you at? You finished with that? Those verse seven. Okay, give me um, give me Zechariah eleven and five. Because the wickedness that America has been putting on our people is the reason they have to be destroyed. You know what I'm saying? The Lord is just. So what goes around comes around. You're not going to touch the Lord. And just like you, think about you. Ain't nobody going to be mistreating your kids and you not do nothing about it. You know what I'm saying? Read that. The book of Zechariah, chapter 11, verse 5. Whose possessors slay him. The people that's over us right now possess us. And what do they do? Slay them. And they slaying us. They killing us in the streets. They killing us without cause. They killing us with our hands up. We saying don't shoot. They killing us. They killing us in wheelchairs. You understand? They killing us for no reason. Read. And hold themselves not guilty. And they not being judged for it. And they not going to jail for it. And they not being punished for it. You understand? The Bible is the living word. Everything that has happened, that's ha that this we're reading about, we still see this to this day. That's how you know that we are the people of this Bible. Because our possessors, the other nations, the white man that over, that's over us, he's still killing us and holding himself not guilty to this day. Now you tell me another nation that that's happening to right now. You tell me if the Arabs are being killed. We are in war with the Arabs and have been in war with the Arabs. And you don't see Arabs getting pulled out of the car and killed for no reason. You don't see the Arabs being taken in the jail and hung and, and they hanging in the, in the jail cell. You don't see the Arabs saying, hands up, don't shoot, and being shot. We are in war with them. So why are we the ones being, are we that bad? Is it just we just that wicked? No, we're not that wicked. The white man is that wicked. That's right. These other nations that's over us is that wicked. And it's time for you to wake up and see it and stop trying to give your love to everybody else and think and thinking that they just down for you. Nah, that ain't everybody, man. Everybody ain't like that. In their heart, they all feel the same way. That's right. Keep reading. And they that sell them say. Blessed be the Lord. Now, they selling you, and they thanking the Lord for it. You understand? Do you understand what, what's happening? They destroying you, killing your family, raping your wife, and they saying, praise the Lord. Keep reading. For I am rich. I'm rich off of stealing this man's land. I'm rich. I done came to the, this new world and conquered it, and now this new land that made me rich. I thank the Lord for it, man. Woo! Keep reading. And their own shepherds pity them not. And then you got all these religious leaders. You got all these Christian pastors. They ain't speaking up for none of the misjustice that we're being. None of the, the things that's happening to us 
and they not saying nothing about it. They not even pitying us. In fact, they telling you to go ahead and uh, you know, vote. Voting ain't stopping you from getting killed. Police ain't pulling you over like you vote. All right, man, go ahead. You you'll, right. you'll be all right. That ain't happening. These religious leaders, Jesse Jackson, ain't pitying us at all. Only way Jesse Jackson can t on, gonna take a, a case is if he can make some money off of the case. Right. That's what they don't give a damn about you. Keep reading. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, said the Lord. The Lord said, I'm not going to keep letting them do this to y'all. I'm not going to keep letting them make it. You understand? That's what we need. We don't need to keep letting them make it. And we letting them make it because we are sinning continually. We're giving them a reason to go ahead and touch us. The Lord, you like, I told them not to do it. They did it. Go ahead and whoop them. I told them not to. I told him not to be out there celebrating no Fourth of July. Now he didn't pop his whole hand off. So be it. You understand? Your sin is what make you receive punishment because the wages of sin is death. I'm gonna keep saying that because that's what you need to see. We're not going to be able to get out of this hell. And, and you're constantly sinning. But we all sin. Yes, we all did sin. But now that you know what's right and know what's wrong, you can stop sinning. Sinning is a choice. Just like being homosexual. It's a choice you make to be homosexual. Just like smoking weed and crack and popping pills. All of that is a choice. The difference between a, a crackhead and a Christian is... The crackhead knows he's wrong. The Christian don't know he's wrong. The Christian think he's right. I mean, that makes sense? Damn yeah, right. I mean, a crackhead is like, man, I'm doing this crack. I know it's wrong. The Christian, like, I'm sinning, but the Lord loved me. Right. He still, he still, he hears my humble cry. The Lord is telling you. It's time out for excuses. It's time for you to do, to show me that you love me. You, he, yeah, you had that time period where you ain't know better. Yeah, he took the truth out of the world. He, he wanted, he let you live the lust and the desires of your heart. Okay, now the truth is in the world again. And now it's time for you to live it. Because if you don't live it, you're going to die. You're wondering why you're having all these problems, these heart attacks and these strokes and all this stuff that's, that's happening to you. You wonder how you got cancer. You wonder how you got AIDS. You got AIDS because you're having homosexual sex. Right. You got diabetes and high blood pressure because you eat crab, shrimp, lobster, and crawfish, and you eat in the bottom feeder, and they put nothing but toxins in your body. Worms. So now you got worms. You got diseases because you are not listening to the law of the Lord. You are letting the white man tell you what's right and wrong. The white man telling you that that it's, that it's that's the new white meat. That's the delicacy. Oh, you want some delicacies? Eat you some shrimp. That's like somebody bringing you a platter of shit and telling you, you want delicacy? Here, take one of these brownies. That's what you're doing. And our people being the salt of the earth, we make everything live. We make, we, oh, oh so they eating shrimp. We gonna have a shrimp, uh, what, a shrimp platter. We gonna have a, we gonna have, you eat crawfish? Well, we gonna have a crawfish boil. Right. We gonna have the, we ain't gonna just have a plate of shrimp and crawfish. Crawfish, we gonna eat a boil. We gonna have a, we gonna make it big. Everybody come through eat these crawfish. I just got 30 pounds, man. We need to eat it up. I'm trying to kill everybody. <laughs> you understand? That's what's happening. And the white man just sitting there laughing. And the white man, he eating them. He eating all of the, the pig ass and everything. And he ain't tripping. Because the Lord ain't punishing him. The Lord is punishing you. 
The white man ain't dying fast off of doing that stuff. You are. The white man ain't going to jail for killing, stealing, raping, and robbing. You are because the Lord is punishing you. And you looking at it like, man, the Lord don't love me. The Lord ain't with me. The Lord do love you, and he is with you. That's why he's punishing you. Because a good father punishes their kids. That's right. That's it on that up. Not us, sir. Keep reading. But lo, I will deliver the men, everyone, into his neighbor's hand. But lo, I will deliver the men, everyone, into his neighbor's hand. You rounded us up. You took us into slavery. You took us from our land. Well, guess what the Lord said he going to do to you? Read that again. But lo, I will deliver the men, everyone, into his neighbor's hand. He is going to pay you back, and we are going to round you up. You're going to be to deliver it into our hands. Because what goes around comes around. Ain't that what y'all say all the time? Ain't that the, ain't that the saying? Ain't the what goes around comes around. That's what's coming to you. It's some more on that. Come on, come. Keep reading. And into the hand of his king. Mm -hmm. And they shall smite the land, and out of their hand I would not deliver them. When we get you, it ain't going to be nothing you can do to stop it. Because our kingdom is going to be forever and ever and ever. And it ain't going to be nothing you can do to stop it. But your kingdom is going to be stopped. And we, you are going to be delivered into our hand. Give me Zephaniah 1 and um, 14. It's right behind that. Yes, you are going to be delivered up. You understand? People are always talking about the day of the Lord. The Lord, when the Lord come back. Let's see what it say about the Lord return. And how it's going to be. The book of Zephaniah. Chapter 1, verse 14. The great day of the Lord is near. Mm. It is near. It hath greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitter. See, your mighty man, your army, your men that you're looking up, you, your generals, your warriors of America and these other nations are going to be in mourning when the Lord puts his hands on you. The Lord is going to thrash these other nations. Read. Verse 15. That day is a day of wrath. And then it's a day of love. A day of wrath. It's a day of peace. A day of wrath. Everybody going to come together. A day of wrath. Read. A day of trouble and distress. No, it's going to be all troubles is going to be over. A day of troubles and distress. We're not telling you what your pastor said. We read out the Bible. Your pastor's been lying to you and telling you that. When the, when the Lord come, it's going to be beautiful. The, the sky going to open up. It's going to be bright. And it's going to just be a day of rejoicing. That ain't what the Bible says. Read. A day of wastingness and desolation. A what? Day of wastingness and desolation. That's a day of destruction. That's what that's talking about. Read. And a, a day of darkness and and gloominess. Oh, no, it's going to be light and, and bright outside. A day of darkness and gloominess. Keep reading. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Thick darkness because the smoke going to come up from the destruction of this place. It ain't going to be no beautiful day when the Lord returns. It's going to be a day of darkness and gloominess. You understand? You need to get right. Keep reading, though. Verse 16, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities mm -hmm. and against the high towers. The places with these, that's got these night dot America. You understand? We got all these big, beautiful sky, skyscrapers and all that. The Lord is going to come against that. And he's going to destroy these places in an hour. Imagine you working for something for 400 years. You've been working, yo, you, you, you got your your great 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 grandfather, your great 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 grandfather, your great great, your grandfather, you, your daddy, you, y'all all been working on this one thing for 400 years, and then in one hour it get destroyed. Well, that's what's gonna happen to you. That's what's gonna happen to America. One hour, the destruction is gonna come. He's reached. 
and I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. What is dung? Dung is shit. Your, your flesh is going to be like dung. Your blood is going to be poured out on these streets. That's why I say when Christ returned, his garment is going to have a vesture look dipped in blood because the streets are going to be flooded with blood of heathens and sinners of our people. That's what the Bible is saying. We're going to, I'm going to show it to you. Just stay, just stay, stay on it up. You're going to see it. You're not getting away with this. You're not getting away from the most high. Keep reading. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. All this money you trying to save up for a rainy day just in case something happened, that ain't going to be able to save you from when the Lord come back. That ain't going to, that ain't going to stop. You ain't going to stop the Lord. That ain't going to stop nothing that's going on because all your silver and your gold is going to be given unto his children. You saving enough money for us. You know, like all your little money and all your gold and all the stuff that you that you holding fast to, it is going to be passed to the righteous. Read. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. By what? The fire of his jealousy. Read. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. A speedy riddance. That's that hour I'm talking about. Matter of fact, let's go there. Let's go to Revelation um, 18. You know this? Come on. Let's go to Revelation 18, man. I'm going to show you what the day of the Lord is. Because see, all these other nations of the earth, they done got rich from working with America. So when they see America get destroyed, they're going to be like, no. No, uh, what my my breadwinner? Read, story nine, the book of Revelation, chapter eighteen, verse nine. And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, these other nations, China, uh, who else uh, got trade? Russia, Syria, uh, Palestine. Everybody that's been trading with America, that's been came over here and got rich. Read. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her mm -hmm. shall bewail her mm -hmm. and lament for her mm -hmm. when, when they shall see the smoke of her burning. When the Lord destroys this place, when this World War III pop off and the Lord jump in and get the whooping ass and taking names, these other nations is going to be crying. They're going to be bewailing looking at America be destroyed. You understand? They're going to be like, no, they had the, the strongest army. They had all the weapons. They got all the nukes. And then this, new, this newcomer then popped up and destroyed the super, super power of the earth. They're going to be scared. Keep reading. Standing afar off for the fear of her tournament. They're going to be looking from their land Looking at what's looking at the, they gonna be watching the news, just watching all the smoke of America just be destroyed, watching it be torn down, building by building, piece by piece, house by house. Read, saying, "Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, mm -hmm. that mighty city, mm -hmm. for in one hour, for in for in six months, for in one hour." For in uh, six hours. For in one hour. You've been building up America for the past 400 years, but in one hour, read, is thy judgment come. The Lord is going to destroy it in an hour. That's a slap in the face. And what's, so, what's even more crazy about it, the white man know it. That's why he's coming down on us so hard, because he knows he had but a little time. Keep reading. And the merchants of the earth and the other nations, all these other people that's going to help you get this money, all these other nations that's going to help you come up, shall read. weep and mourn over her. They're going to cry because the plug just been killed. We just lost the plug. 
Read, for no man buy their merchandise anymore. Ain't nobody going to be able to go run in no 7-Eleven no more. You ain't going to be able to go to Miss Kim, the beauty supply, and go to Miss Kim them and go get no hair. You ain't going to be able to go get no nails from Miss Kim. You ain't going to be able to go get no gas from the Arabs because they ain't going to have nobody to go and get to, to give it to no more. They came over here and gave it to America and reaped all the bread. Well, that's over with. The plug been plugged. Right. Read. Yeah, yeah, keep reading. <clears throat> the merchandise of gold and silver mm -hmm. and precious stones. Yo, all the stuff that you selling in America, you know what I'm saying? All the clothing, the uh, the pearls, the, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know the Chinese people. They got all the damn gold and diamonds. You want to go get you a grill, you got to go to, what's that boy's name? Johnny Dane. Johnny, Johnny Dane. TV Johnny. You got to go to TV Johnny to get you a grill. Well, all that gold and silver and pearls and fine linens, keep reading. In purple and silk and mm -hmm. scarlet and all thine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble. Everything that you that that make you feel like you somebody in America, you ain't gonna be able to get it no more. Cause the Lord gonna destroy it. You feel me? Keep reading. And cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. Everything you got. Is going to be destroyed by the Lord. Everything, all of, from the dollar to the seasoning to the incense to the beast is going to be destroyed. Keep reading. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. Everything you've been working for all your life is going to be destroyed in how long? One hour. In one hour. That's what the Bible just said. 400 years of building, one hour of destruction. Keep reading. And all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. Everything that you that made you feel like you were somebody is going to depart from you. Everything you've been working for is going to be taken from you. Read. And thou shalt find them no more at all. You Say what? No more at all. You're not going to be able to find it nowhere. No more at all. You know where you're gonna find it at? With us. Museums. You're gonna ask, you're gonna hear about it. You're gonna read about it. Read. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. That's what have, they don't happen to these other nations. They are gonna be weeping and wailing because all of their resources are gonna be taken from them. And this is how you know that the kingdom of heaven is not for everybody. Give me Obadiah um, 1. Let's go at verse 15. This is how you know the kingdom is not for everybody. The book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 15. Mm -hmm. For the day of the Lord is near. Upon all the heathen. Upon some of the heathen. Upon all the heathen. They didn't say the day of the Lord is near to, to everybody in the world. It's saying the day of the Lord is near to all the heathens. Meaning everyone other than Israel. The other nations. Read. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. The way you've treated us, you will be treated that way. Thy reward shall return upon thy own hand. It's going to come. What, what goes around comes around. You ain't going to be able to stop it. Read. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yeah, that they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. Y'all going to get a whooping so bad that it's going to be like you had never been here. 
You, it's gonna be like you were never on top. Y'all going these other nations are gonna get thrashed on so hard. How many other heathens? All the heathens. All the other nations are gonna get smashed on so hard that it's gonna be as if they were never on top. Now, right now, we are under everybody. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the nation that's not desired. So we at the bottom of everybody. Well, when we get on top, it's going to be as if you were never on top the way we ruled, the way our kingdom is set up. Our kingdom going to be set up so live that it's going to look like it ain't, it, your kingdom ain't never look like our kingdom going to look. Your kingdom ain't going to have no streets to go. What part of America, China, Asia, Russia got streets of gold? Zero. Ain't none. But I was will. And it's going to make this little kingdom that we got right now, it's going to make it look like nothing. Keep reading. Verse 17. But upon Mount Zion. But upon who? Mount Zion. Upon all the world. Upon Mount Zion. Upon Israel. Shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. That's where it's going to be. Holiness meaning separateness. Upon Israel, we're going to be separate from y'all. Y'all going to be out there struggling, trying to get it. These other nations, y'all going to be out there living the life that we live now, but worse. But Israel will be saved. But it's going to say all of Israel will be saved. Right. Keep reading. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Who's going to possess it? The house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Keep reading. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. Mm -hmm. And the house of Joseph a flame. And the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. I don't know how clear we can make it, but that's crystal clear to me. For the Lord had spoken it. Now, let's go back to the, the 18. It said that the house of Jacob, no, 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 yeah, we're at the next verse, verse 18. It verse says, two. for the house of Jacob will be a fire. That is Judah. And Benjamin, the house of Joseph. Oh, no, that's Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. The house of Joseph will be the other northern kingdom, which would be the Native American and the and um and the Hispanics. We're gonna all come together and we're gonna be a flame. We're gonna be running through, burning it down, destroying this place. And then it said that Esau is gonna be stubble. What is stubble? That's the stuff at the bottom of the pit that burn, you know what I'm saying? That's that wood that, that has been consumed with fire. That's what Esau is gonna be. And it said that we are going to devour them. And how many people are going to be left from Esau? And there shall, shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. It's going to be a handful of them. Any remaining of the house of Esau. There is not going to be any remaining of the house of Esau. The only way you're going to be able to see a white person is if you go to a museum. Just like dinosaurs. There are no dinosaurs here. Go ahead, pull it. There are no dinosaurs. The only way you can go see a dinosaur is if you go to the museum. Well, the white man, Donald Trump, and all the presidents are going to be in the museum for your eyes to see. Only in the museum when the Lord gets through with them. Isaiah 14, yeah. um, go to, that's like 16. Is this the man? Isaiah 14, 16. Okay. Right here we go. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 16. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. Everybody that look, go ahead. And consider thee saying, is this the man? Our kids going to be in the kingdom, walking through the museum, and they're going to be looking at the white man up there, and they're going to be like, is, is this the man? Is this the man? That made the earth to tremble. This the one that, that was ruling over y'all and had the earth trembling by dropping all these bombs on the earth? Is this this the caveman? He read. That did shake kingdoms. That did shake the kingdoms. That made the world as a wilderness and, and destroyed the cities thereof. The white man is the man that made the earth to tremble. 
that made it desolate. And our kids gonna be in the museums like, is that the man? Like, come on. That was that was the devil. The one that's small amongst the heathen. The smallest amongst the heathen. We go back to Obadiah. We go back to Obadiah. Keep reading. Uh, you have what verse? Nineteen. Yeah, uh, that's it. That's all I wanted right there. So uh, now, what you need to know is, give me Second Thessalonians two and three. What you need to know is that. Since we do know that these other nations, all the heathens are going to be destroyed, you need to prevent yourself from being destroyed. How do you do that? You need an insurance plan. And you got an insurance plan right here. Two. Second Thessalonians 2 and 2. No, 2 and 3. You need an insurance plan. We got the insurance plan right here in the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge because we are teaching you how to get yourself Right. That's right. According to the Bible. Not according to what makes us feel good. Read the it. book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Let no man deceive you by any means. Don't let nobody deceive you by any means. For Read that day shall not come. The Lord is not going to return until what? Except there come a falling away first. You have to fall away from Christianity. You got to fall away from Egyptology. You got to fall away from these fake Israelite groups. You got to fall away from homosexuality. You got to fall away from drugs and alcohol and these pagan holidays. You have to fall away and make this kingdom fall apart. We are the most spenders in all over the world. And when we start spinning with everybody else and start spinning with each other, then we, we can tear down this kingdom with that alone. Just buying black with your brothers and sisters, making the dollar circulate in your community alone, buying land and building compounds on it and stop paying rent to everybody else but yourself. We got to fall away first. And what? And that man of sin, that spirit of sin, that man of sin, that demon of sin, that man of sin, the man of sin, because the white man is the devil that the Bible speaks of. That's right. Read, be revealed. He has to be revealed for who he is. The son of perdition. The son of perdition. Now, give me the son of Bible dictionary and go to Edom. Go to Edom in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. This has to be revealed. This knowledge has to be brought out. The definition of Edom in the Zondervan Dictionary. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgment. The judgment is coming to Edom. You understand that? Read that again. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgment. We'll keep reading. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from God. The Lord is going to destroy all white people on the face of the earth. That's right. The scholars know that. A white man wrote this, and he's telling the truth. He knows his destiny. The man of sin has to be revealed. Read the finish, finish that scripture. That was it, son of perdition. The what? The son of what? The son of perdition. Now, let's see what the son of perdition is. Let's see who that is. Perdition, son of, that's what it's going to say. Go to the next verse. Verse 4. Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. Who is opposing and exalting himself above everybody that is called God? We are God's chosen people. Who's opposing us? The white man. Who's calling himself above everyone that is called God's people? The white man. The Pope is calling himself the father right now. That ain't no Chinese man doing that. That is a white man doing that. Let's see what the son of perdition is. They say the son of perdition. Read that. The son of perdition 
in the Zona Van Bible Dictionary. Mm -hmm. A phrase used to designate two men of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Christ uses it in referring to Judas Iscariot, and Paul uses the same title in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3, mm -hmm. applying it to the man of sin who is the Antichrist. It is the what? The Antichrist. Why is the white man called the Antichrist? Because he's against Christ. He's anti-Christ. Christ is a black man. He's a white man. Christ pre pre preached that he only loved his people. He preached that he died for everybody. Christ was a man of war. This is a man of love. He's anti-everything that Christ is. Read. It is derived from the custom among the Hebrews of noting a certain trait or characteristic in a person and then referring to him as the son of that trait. That's what he is. He's the son of the devil because the white man is the, he's the son of Satan because he's the devil. That's right. Understand? That's what we're trying to get you to understand. So this got to be revealed first. First, you got to understand that you got to separate from these nations and you got to understand that this white man is opposing you. Understand? He's not on your side. You got a co-worker at, at work that you just love, that you just want to save. You're not going to be able to save them. What you can do is die with them. Right. If you love them that much, if you feel like you, you know, you just got to be with them forever, then go ahead. Go to um, Zechariah 13 and 8. Now we're going to see what's going to happen to our people that don't get right. This is the this is the, what the Bible says. This is not what we say. The book of Zechariah, chapter thirteen, verse eight, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, said the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Two thirds of Israel will be cut off and die. Two thirds. But only one third will be saved. Keep reading. And I will bring the third part through the fire. He's going to bring them through the fire. Now, do you know what that fire is? That's the test and the trials that you are going through right now. You are being purified. You are being changed. He's bringing us through the fire to see if you're worth it, to see if you are going to, if you deserve the reward that he has for you. Keep reading. And we'll refine them as silver is refined. Mm -hmm. And we'll try them as gold is tried. Mm -hmm. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. The Lord, the Bible said that the Lord heareth not sinners. But when you are not living a sinful life, he said he hears you. Keep reading. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. We going to claim the Lord, and he going to claim us. How do you claim the Lord? By your actions, by what you do. I can't claim to be with you, and everything I do is opposed to me being with you. What you do is what shows who you are with. That's what the Lord said. Once you start keeping these commandments and doing what you're supposed to do, then the Lord going to start hearing your humble cry. You understand? So what you need to do is Matthew 6 and 33. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first. Seek second. But seek ye first. I got to get this bread. The, but seek ye first uh -huh. the kingdom of God. Seek what first? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of uh, what I'm trying to do. The kingdom of God. But I got to get this money. But seek ye first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness. And my righteousness. And his righteousness. But it don't feel good to me. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Some of these things. And all these things shall be added unto you. Everything will be added when, to you once you seek the Lord first. 
That's just like you got a, a child that's disobedient. You're not going to go to the store and just go buy him everything he wants, and he won't even listen to you. No. Once you prove that you deserve the reward, then you'll get the reward. So Christ is telling you to seek him first and his kingdom and his righteousness, and then everything else will be added unto you. That's what's important. That's what we're not doing. We're not seeking him first. We're seeking after the riches of this world, which the Bible called the deceitfulness of riches. Of riches. They deceitful because they make you feel good, but like the scripture just said, you ain't going to be able to take them with you. They're going to be burnt up. And it said that all of the wealth of the right of the rich are going to the righteous. You understand? So let me get um Luke 17 and 21. Luke 17, 21. Ooh, I'm in the wrong place myself. 17, 21. 21, yeah. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 21. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. Mm -hmm. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Everybody looking for how the kingdom going to come. We got to build the kingdom. The same way America was built, the same way Every empire on this earth was made great. It started brick by brick, piece by piece, person by person. The kingdom is in us. The Lord gave us all a different gift to build the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? He got, he got some of us that have gifts of plumbing. Some of us got gifts of uh, drawing out the construction work. Some of us got gifts of uh, doing electrical work. Some of us got cement gifts. Some of us got, some of us know how to sew and cook. And all of that, us working together and doing it, that is how we're going to bring the kingdom. That's right. That is, we have to build the kingdom piece by piece, brick by brick. Do you know what the disciples did? The disciples took, matter of fact, give me Acts for. Want me to say this or drop this? Drop that. Acts 4, and it's like, I think it's verse 34, 35. This, let me show you how, how the disciples did it. Acts 4 and 34. Mm, and it started 34. The book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 34. Neither was there any among them that lacked. Matter of fact, it started 32. Verse 32, and the multitude of them that believed were one slot, were of one heart and of one soul. Was of what? One heart and of one soul. In different Israelite groups. Of one heart and of one soul. The people who believed had one heart and one soul. They didn't have a whole bunch of different idolatries. They didn't have a whole bunch of different belief systems. They all had one mind, one goal, one one way to do it. The scriptures say wide is the road to destruction and narrow is the way to righteousness. You got to have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one. It's not about what you feel and how you feel about doing it. It's about us all coming together to be one. Scriptures say gather yourself together. Yea, gather together, nation not desire. We got to gather. How many governments does, does America have? One. How many armies do America have? One big army. One big army with a whole bunch of different categories that do different things. You got the, the people that fly, the people that's in the water, the people that people that's on the ground, but they all working for one purpose. That's right. Keep reading. Neither said any of them that are of the things which he possessed was his own. He said what? Neither said any of them that art of the things which he possessed was his own. People wasn't being selfish. People like, they say, man, it's not. Her. You know, when they got on that one heart, one love stuff, if I got it, you got it. Because we want, we family. You need help, I got it, I'm going to help you. 
If we had that mindset as a nation, we would never go broke or homeless or poor. That's what we are doing in the ISUPK. We are bringing that one mindset That's right. to the nation. If I got it, we are bringing brotherhood and sisterhood back. What's missing? He read it. But they had all things coming. If I got it, you got it. That's what they had. I, all things were coming. You, I ain't got no sugar. I'm finna go ask them for some sugar. Now I got some sugar because they had some sugar. That's how it worked. Keep reading. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. And great grace was upon them all. The Lord was with them because the, the Lord was with the apostles because he was bringing everybody together. So he gave them power. He gave them authority over the nation because they were doing it the way that it was supposed to be done. Keep reading. Neither was there any among them that let. Nobody in the nation let when they all came together. When they all came together, nobody let. That's what's missing. It. That You wonder why it's so hard for you to pay this and do that because you're trying to do it by yourself. Damn right. You don't have nobody that you can call on for help. You don't have nobody that you can call for support because you are independent. Keep reading. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. Everybody that had stuff, they sold it and they put it all in one account. Under one, in one people's hands. The disciples. They brought everything they had that was valuable and brought it to the disciples. Read. And laid them down at the apostles' feet. Mm -hmm. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. That's what's missing. The leadership. The, the disciples took everybody's stuff and say a single woman making three figures in today's time. It's making six figures. So like you got a single woman making six figures, and then you got a brother with eight kids that ain't got that much money. Well, you know what it did? We taking all that money, we're going to give this brother with eight kids more than we're going to give the single woman because he need it. Going to give them according to what they need, and we're going to distribute, distribute it equally. But you don't have nobody like that that you can trust out here because everybody is snakes. And everybody is, is niggas. And, and, and they all for their own game. And that's why the Lord is raising up righteous men that you can trust. That ain't going to steal from you and they ain't going to take from you and make sure you don't get what you need. That's what's being raised up in the UPK. That's right. That's it on that. So, um, um, let's go to, um, let's go to Amos 9. Amos 9 and 8. Amos 9 and 8. Yeah. Read that. Book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God or upon the sinful kingdom. The Lord sees everything that go on in this place. He's watching every move you make. And he is watching these other nations with their foot on, a, on our neck. Read. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. And America is going to be destroyed off the face of the earth. It's going to be like Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah has not been rebuilt. It is nothing but dust and ashes over there. That's how America is going to be. That's why the Bible called America Sodom and Gomorrah because this, the end of it is going to be the exact same. Keep reading. Saving that I would not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. You're not going to destroy who? The house of Jacob, keep, said the Lord. Keep reading. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel mm -hmm. among all nations. He's going to sift us out. He going to Get all the bad out of us. He gonna take out the what he don't need. He gonna sift us like corn. Read, like as corn is sifted in the sieve, 
yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. The stuff that you don't need, you're going to let that fall on the earth. But what you need going to be still in that, in that bowl. He's going to sift out the bad from the good. He's going to separate the wicked from the righteous. Read. All the sinners of my people. All shall, the sins of who? Of my people. That is the two-thirds of our people. Shall die by the sword. Keep reading. Which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. They saying that it ain't going to stop us. This evil, you know, that we doing, the Lord ain't, he ain't tripping. He ain't, you know what I'm saying? I can live life however I want to live it. The Lord said he's going to sift you out. He gonna destroy you, and you gonna die and be destroyed with America. So that's why we are saying what we saying about coming out of America, come separating, coming out of her, and not partaking in her sins. Just like we read in Revelation 18, come out of her. That's the whole point of this, man. We gotta separate because we got something that's coming to us. And let me show you how the Lord gonna do it. We ain't going to have to go to war. Let's go to uh, Matthew 24 and 14. We ain't got to go to war for this to come. We ain't got to, you know, fight no battles. We ain't got to go get no tanks. Matthew 24 and 14. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. For a witness unto all nations, mm -hmm. and then shall the end come. We got brothers and sisters all over this place, all over this earth, because that's why the scripture said we're going to be delivered from the four corners of the earth, because we everywhere. This gospel has to be preached for the end to come. The truth, this gospel, not the gospel that he brought, not the love everybody gospel. The gospel to love one another has to be preached for the end to come. Give me 1 Corinthians um, 1 and 19. 1 and 18. Yeah, 1 and 19. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 19. Mm -hmm. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. That's what we are doing in the ISUPK. We are destroying the wisdom of the wise people of today. The people that think they know something, we're destroying it. And we're proving to you that they don't know what they're talking about. Keep reading. And we'll bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. These people that's out here that got the money, and they out here, uh, Jesse, uh, Jesse Jackson on TV, looking like he got some knowledge. How many sermons have you seen Jesse Jackson preach in the church? The Reverend Jesse Jackson. Mm -hmm. I ain't never seen him preach nothing. But you, you look at him like he's a wise and an upright person. Well, we are letting you know that Jesse Jackson is a coon. We're letting you know that Martin Luther King destroyed Black, Hispanic, and Native American by telling us to come together. We're destroying the knowledge of these lying people. Keep reading. Verse 20. Where is the wise? Mm -hmm. Where is the scribe? Mm -hmm. Where is the disputer of this world? Where are all the people that's going to come up against us? Who going to cut the UPK? Where that nigga at? UPK been around since 69 and they took la ILs. Where is the man that's going to come and shut this down? Keep reading. Had not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Are we not making foolish the wisdom of this world? Are we not proving to you that the white man is the devil? Keep reading. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew, knew not God. By the wisdom of the world, you didn't know God. You say, oh, I know the Lord. The Lord, he all love. You don't know the Lord because the Lord is a man of war. He not about love. You understand? He shows his love by not killing you when you going out and sleeping with your brother's wife. That's him. He's showing you love. He's not all love. It's a difference. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Read that part again. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The way we're going to be saved out of this hellhole is by the foolishness of teaching. 
That's how we're going to be saved, by waking our people up and teaching them the truth. Because when we wake, the more people that wake up, the faster this place is going to come to a close. By the foolishness of teaching. You understand? That's why it's so important that people get in these classes and learn. You keep saying you're ready to get out of here, but you don't have each one got to teach one. You understand? We, you got to put your brick in. You got to do this work. We got to all be unified under one body. We're going to have one government. You got to have one body. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what we're telling you. Now, give me Ecclesiasticus. I mean, six. Second Ezra, six and nine. That's it, you're right. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that's what we're trying to get you to understand. By the foolishness of teaching and learning the truth and living it is how we're going to be redeemed out of this place. Read that. Second Ezra 6 and 9. In the Apocrypha, the book of Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world. The white man is the end of this world. When they say the world going to end, the white man's world going to end. Read. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are going to rule after that. We are what's coming next. Give me Daniel 2 and 44. That's what we're trying to get you to understand, man. Let me see that apocryphal one more time while you find that. 2, two and 44. Read that. The book of Daniel. Chapter 2, verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Mm -hmm. The Lord is setting up his kingdom in the last days. He was Daniel was prophesying about the end of the world, talking about the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had with all the different kingdoms. And he said, in the days of these kings, that is when the Lord is going to set up his kingdom. He reads. Which shall never be destroyed. Which going to be overtaken. Which shall never be destroyed. Ain't nobody going to ever stop our kingdom. Ever. He read. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. And the kingdom ain't going to, we ain't going to be ruling the kingdom with everybody. Mixing nation. You, we got a, a Chinese brother running this. Uh, that, we ain't going to be, it's going to be ruled by us. It's going to be fubu. Vote from us by us. Read. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. We're gonna break up in pieces. We're gonna have we're gonna have this land over here. We're gonna have this land over here. We're gonna have this land over here. We're gonna have this land. All 12 tribes are gonna have their own land, and we're gonna consume these other nations. And they're going to be slaves. Now if I ain't cool, no slave scripture. Let me get Isaiah um Isaiah 60. Wait, you finished with that? It was mine. Go ahead, get that. And it shall stand forever. And it's going to stand how long? Forever. This kingdom that's coming to this earth is going to stand forever. It ain't going to never be taken away. Ever. Give me Isaiah um, 60, start at verse 9. The book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 9. Surely the isles shall wait for me, mm -hmm. and the ships of Tarsh or Tarshish, Salakia, first to bring thy sons from far. The, the, we're going to be having ships bringing your kids in the same way y'all did us. Y'all had us coming from afar, but well, we're going to have ships bringing your sons from afar. Read. Their silver and their gold with them. And all that little money y'all got that y'all been saving, we gonna just, they just going to bring it on into the kingdom, and we're just going to take it. Keep reading. Unto the name of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. and to the Holy One of Israel. No, that is. That's to Christ. You're going to bring it in the name of the Most High in Christ. Read. Because he had glorified thee. Mm -hmm. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy wall. Who's going to build thy wall? And the sons of strangers shall build up thy wall. They trying to get the Mexicans to build a wall, but guess what? Let, let them build a wall. Let the Mexicans build a wall. Because what goes around comes around. 
and your kids going to build up our walls. Keep reading. And their kings shall minister unto thee. Mm -hmm. Keep going. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. I let you do everything that you've been doing all this time you've been doing it. Now, Donald Trump is going, while he's still living, uh, what's, what's that, Kim Chong Zhu? Oh, yeah, Kim. him, whatever his name is. He, uh, he going to be telling you, man, go, bring it, bring it, take it to him. Give it, give it. He going to be ministering to you. Do you know what ministry is? To minister is to serve. We going to have Kim Chong Zhu serving. You understand? Keep reading. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. And we ain't closing. We like what, like Las Vegas? They stay open all. They on all night. We gonna be open all day and night. Keep reading. They shall not be shut day nor night. We, you gonna be bringing in your resources and your gold and all your stuff day and night. Read that men may bring unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles, mm -hmm. and that their kings may be brought. We're going to bring all of y'all in and put y'all to work. The people that, the governors, the kings of your land, all of that, slaves. And then we're going to be like, all right, my brother over there, he needs you over there, so we're going to ship you out. Oh, but I got a wife, that's fine. We're sending your wife over there. Well, I, what about my kids? We're sending your kids over there. One kid going there, and the other kid going there. Justice, the same way you did us. Keep going. For the nation and kingdom that would not serve thee shall perish. Them people that's like, oh no, we ain't dealing with that. You got us messed up. You're going to die. Ain't gonna be no, 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 uh, re no big rebellion. Y'all ain't finna come together against us. We're gonna just kill you. You, you. Kill him. You, but why? Kill him. Get down or lay, or down. lay down. Matter of fact, hold this. Go to Matthew 10 and 34. I think that's right. Matthew 10 and 34. Mm hmm. That's the one. Read that. Mm -hmm. Read that. All right, go ahead. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Christ said, I ain't coming to send peace. What did, what did he say? Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Mm -hmm. I came not to send peace, but a sword. That's what he's going to be doing. He's going to be giving the order. Swing the sword. Matter of fact, give me Luke 19 and 27. Done yeah, done with it. 19 and 27. That's the one I was looking for, but that was perfect too. That just show you the spirit of Christ. Spirit of Christ ain't what they tell you in church. Christ said, I ain't come here to be peaceful. I came to bring us war. The book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 27. But those, mine enemies, these other nations that's going to be coming in, bringing in their resources, which would not that I should reign over them, and they don't want to listen to what we say to do, bring hither. He said, bring them to me. And slay them before me. There's no contradiction in the Bible. Christ saying the same thing that the Old Testament is saying. You ain't with us, you against us, you're going to die. Now go back to where you was at. Nazel. Read that. Where you was at? 12. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, keep reading. Finish it up. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. You can't tell me that ain't a black man. Read it from the top so you can hear the spirit that he said it in. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yeah. Those nations <laughs> shall be other than wasted. <laughs> it's a you. you can't tell me this ain't a black man. He like, yeah, those nations gonna be utterly perished. You understand? Like, 
Man, we are a family of warriors. You know what I'm saying? And they done took the fight out of us. And the only way that we are going to get our kingdom back is to take it back. We ain't got to take it by force. We just got to love each other. That's all we got to do. It's not hard. We got to set our houses back in order. The proper order that the scriptures gave us to follow under. We got to set our nation back in order. The proper order that the scriptures gave us to follow. That's it on that. Call my con. All right. Let's go to uh, go to the next page. 61 and read verse 5. The book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 5. And strangers Hold shall... Up. Read, 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 read verse 4 and 5. Verse 4. And they shall build the old waste. Mm -hmm. They shall raise up the former desolation. Mm -hmm. And they shall repair the waste cities. Mm -hmm. The desolation of many generations. We're going to make them rebuild on desolate and destroyed grounds. Keep reading. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. We fed their flocks. They called us cowboy. Hey, you. You're a cowboy. You go out there with the cows. They going to feed our flocks. Read. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Vine dressers. They going to be in our field working as our plowmen and our vine dressers. You understand? We're going to have slaves in the kingdom. You don't want a slave? You don't want to put, have nobody listen to you? You've been listening to your, your supervisor? That's slavery. Why don't you want to be the supervisor? We Is we that important that you want to give up your rulership for we? Because if you can't stop doing something on your own, you're not going to have enough strength and power to do what the Lord tell you to do. Because once he give you power and authority, what you going to do? You're going to do what you want to do with it, and we're going to have to kill you. So to spare your life, he just testing you now. You understand? Let me go to my favorite scripture. Number 14 and 1, Isaiah. Yeah. It's my favorite scripture in the Bible. This last scripture I'm going to pull. This 14 and 1. Start at 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. You want to go back to your homeland? Keep the law, statutes, and commandments. You want to be in rulership? Be obedient to what the Lord tells you to do so you can get the kingdom and get out of this empire. Read. And the strangers shall be joined with them, mm -hmm. and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. The other nations going to be joined with us, and they're going to need you like you need them right now. The way you need them Chinese women for their hair and them nails, they're going to need you for hair and nails. The way you need H-E-B and Walmart for water and food, they're going to need you for water and food. They're going to cleave to you the way you cleave to them. Read. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. We're going to take them and bring them to our place. Their place. Uh huh. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. We're going to own them in the kingdom of heaven for servants and handmaids. Read. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Read the next verse. Verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. Rest from what? From thy sorrow. Rest from your sorrow. And from thy fear. Mm -hmm. And from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. That's going to be over with. But you got to do something to get that. You can't be out here living the life you want to live and think the Lord going to bless you with that. With rulership, it's not happening. It's not going to happen. You have to give up something to get something. That's fair. That's is what, what's wrong with that? You understand? Let's sit on that. Let me get uh let's get the beauty of this place. Let's get Toby. Toby 13. 
October 13, start at verse 16. Okay. In Apocrypha, the book of Tobit, chapter 13, verse 16. For Jerusalem shall be built up with sapphires. Wait a minute. Uh, who? What's going to be built up? Jerusalem shall be built up with sapphires. No, this ain't talking about nothing from the past because Jerusalem ain't never been built with sapphires. It's talking about when we get in the kingdom, when we get home in the kingdom of heaven, going to be built up with sapphires. Read. And emeralds. And emeralds. And precious stones. And precious stones. Thy walls and towers and battlements with pure gold. With what? Pure gold. We're going to have towers, meaning skyscrapers, of pure gold. Keep reading. And the streets of Jerusalem. The streets. Shall be paved with barrel. With what? Barrel. The angels look like barrel. And the streets ain't, you know why everything is cement in America? Because the white man run it and he's a caveman. He's used to rocks. So everything that he made is rock. Well, in our kingdom, we are royalty. And we're used to gold and silver and carbuckle. What is it called? And paved with barrel and carbuckle. And what else? And stones of Ophir. Our streets are going to be paved with burl, carbuckle, and ophir. Them stones you ain't never seen before. You fired up about a diamond and a ruby. Wait till you see some carbuckle. <laughs> <laughs> Keep reading. And all her streets shall say, hallelujah. The, wait, who going to say it? All the streets shall say. Those streets going to be giving praise to the Most High, saying what? Hallelujah. And they shall praise him, saying, Blessed be God, which had extolled it forever. You don't want to be a part of that because of some weed. You're going to let weed stop you from seeing streets that's praising the Lord in their beauty. You understand? I ain't giving that up for nobody. That's right. Like, I'm trying to be ruling in those places. I ain't trying to be looking at it and, oh, this is so nice. I wish I could stay over here. No. I'm trying to be over it. Give me Revelation 21. Now, let's get that in the Bible now. Done with, the Done with it. <clears throat> Revelation 21 and 18. Twenty one and eighteen. Yeah, go ahead. The book of Revelation, chapter twenty one, verse start eighteen. 12. Start at twelve, real fast. Chapter twenty one, verse twelve. It had a wall great and high. It had twelve gates. It had, it had eighteen gates. It had twelve gates. It had gates for all the nations. Twelve gates. They read. And at the gates. 12 angels. So we got some security at the gate. That's why the gate's going to be open all day. You got 12 angels that's going to be posted at the gate. Read. And names written thereon. So on top of the gates, there's going to be some names written. What's the names going to be? Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. How? Of all 18 nations on the earth. Of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. How is it that a, another nation going to come into the kingdom of heaven if they, ain't, if they name ain't on the gate? To come in. Read. On the east, three gates. On the east, going to be three. On the north, three gates. Keep reading. On the south, three gates. Mm -hmm. And on the west, three gates. Mm -hmm. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. Mm -hmm. And in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So when you get in, then you're going to see the little apostles' names. You understand? Know like, that's. Come on now. So lucky. That is glorious. Now drop down to um 18. Drop down to 17. And he measured the wall thereof mm -hmm. and hundred and forty and four cubits, mm -hmm. according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. Keep reading. And the building of the wall of it was Salakia. So and the building of the wall of it was of Jasper. Mm -hmm. And the city was pure gold, mm -hmm. like unto clear glass. Do you hear that? 
What is wrong with that? Keep reading. And the foundation of the wall of the city were garnished with all the manner of precious stone. What precious stone? Keep reading. The first foundation was Jasper. Mm -hmm. The second, Sapphire. Mm -hmm. The third, a Calcondy. Mm -hmm. The fourth, an Emerald. Mm -hmm. The fifth, Sardonyx. Mm -hmm. The sixth, Sardes. Mm -hmm. The seventh, Chrysolite. You ain't never heard of this. You go on to, go on to jury store and ask for some Chrysolite. Hang on, look at you crazy. Keep reading. The eighth, Beryl. Mm -hmm. The ninth, a topaz. And see, these are all the stones for the 12 tribes of Israel. If you don't know, we all got stones. You understand? We all got a stone for our tribe. Uh, uh, like a diamond or ruby and carbuckle, burrow. All they got, all they got stones for each one of our tribes. And the city gonna be made with these stones. Keep reading. The tenth, a Christ Salakia, Christ of Prices. Mm -hmm. The eleventh, a Jacinth. The twelfth and Amy ain't this mm -hmm. amethyst. Yeah. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. The gates are big old pearls. Keep reading. Every several gate was of one pearl. One the each gate was one big pearl. Read. And the street of the city was pure gold. Come on now. Like what? As it were transparent glass. And you mean to tell me you want weed? You want to be you want your homosexuality to stop you from getting that? Man, the hell with all the wickedness of this world. I'm trying to be in the kingdom of the most high. For the last scripture, let me get Revelation 4 and 10. So like if I could just read this one. Read that. This here is heavy. Verse 23. And the city had no need of the sun, mm. neither of the moon, mm. to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Golly, you ain't gonna even need no sun because the Lord gonna be in the midst of the city. We gonna have light all day. Revelations 4. Now we're going to see why we live this life that we live. Start at 10. We're going to see why all of this is going on. You know what I'm saying? You're going to see why, why we have life. What's the purpose of this life? What's the purpose of all of this? Read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 10. The four and 20 elders fall down before him that sat on the throne. Okay, so this is the rank and order in the kingdom. You got the Most High, you got Christ, then you got the 24 elders that sit around the throne of the Most High. Then you got the angels, the seven angels, which were the leaders of the seven churches. Then under that, you got the heavenly host, which is the army, right? Now, his council, right under Christ, the 24 elders, they taking their crown and they throwing them at his feet. Listen what they say. And worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Mm -hmm. For thou hast created all things. He has created what? All things. And for thy pleasure. For what? Thy pleasure. Uh -huh. They are and were created. All of this is for the Lord's pleasure. That's heavy. You were created for the Lord's pleasure. The Lord is watching TV. You watch TV for pleasure, he made the earth for pleasure. You stressing over life, he's chilling because he got everything in control. This is for his pleasure. I'm Officer Yatizak with the Israelite School of Universal and Practical Knowledge. And if you ain't ready to, to change your life and get in the, the body of Christ, then you just lost out here. We are not affiliated with no other Hebrew Israelite camp. You need to pay your tithes to the men of the Lord so we can do this work and build this nation the way we supposed it's supposed to be built. Get ready for Passover. Passover is coming up March the 30th, Yonkers, New York. 
You know what I'm saying? Everybody need to come out. It is a commandment to be at Passover. You don't come to Passover, you're a Christian. You right. Know, you ain't keeping the commandments. You understand? With that said, shalom. Perfect. Perfect. I was gonna rip it harder. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynch is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody like I'm Sonny Lipton. I'm Jack Dippy. There's no one like me. I'm from the Air Force. There's no one that can match me. Uh, no opinion. Why they thinking this ain't good to be? And we are really, really imitation. I be contemplating why this ain't no like heavy rotation on radio stations.